Hello YouTube, my name is Zach and I am back making another video. It feels like it's been forever, but I am definitely ready to get back into it. Now I can't promise I'm going to make videos every week from now on, so you know, don't hold me to that, but I'm definitely going to start making videos again. And I figured it'd be a great time for me just to kind of have some fun and tell you guys what kind of music I'm into or what singers I really like. It's actually one of the most common questions I get from people like, who are your favorite singers? Do you have to listen to singers that have perfect singing technique? With all of this, you know, knowledge you have about the voice, is it hard for you to listen to singers who don't have perfect technique? And the answer to that question is no. And I listen to a ton of singers that don't have perfect technique. It's not like I'm like this robot that like only hears singing technique when I listen to music. It's not like that. So I figured I'd just go down the list. I have 10 of my favorite singers and I have three honorable mentions. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about every singer, but hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have an idea of what I appreciate about each of these singers. And I'll put some recommendations down in the description of maybe some things that you can listen to by them that I think really showcase what they do best. And you might be surprised at some of these singers. I think that uh, when I made the list, I realized when I look back on it that it's somewhat diverse. I mean, I'm sure that some of these singers will come at no surprise to some of you, but I do think there are a couple that, that uh, some of you will not expect. So without further ado, let's talk about the honorable mentions, and I'm not going to put these in a numerical order just because I want to at least put them in here showing that I appreciate them and I really like them. The first honorable mention would be Annika van Heerspegen, and of course I've done a video about her. I've analyzed her singing. Uh, I actually got a shout out from her on Facebook. Uh, where she actually recommended my video, which was awesome. And uh, that just made me like her even more, I guess. But uh, I really like her singing. I always have. The reason that she's not on the top 10 list is because I haven't listened to the entirety of her work to be able to make a clear judgment about how I feel about her across the board. But I do know that everything I've ever heard that she's sung, I've really liked. Next up is Ross Jennings of Haken. And if you follow my channel, you know that I've done an interview with him before. And he's a great guy. He was really fun to talk to, really intelligent. Um... His music is amazing. The band is fantastic. They're one of my favorites. Uh, the reason he didn't make the top 10 list is because I feel like some of his singing gets overshadowed by the music. And for me, a singer... And for me it's important for a singer to have a, as much of a role in the music as the musicians do. And I feel like sometimes Ross gets overshadowed by the musicians. There are times where he really, really shines though. Like in the song crystallized when they do the little polyphonic section, like things like that are really where he stands out. But I feel like across the board, Haken's music is a little more instrumentally driven than vocally driven. And it kind of makes Ross take a back seat. But other than that, I love his singing. I love the way that his voice is implemented into the music when he does sing. Third honorable mention is Robert Edens of former, of Native Construct. They're now defunct, but Robert is actually a former voice student of mine as well, but he's a great guy, wonderful singer, really creative. The entire band, when they were functioning, was super creative, and he does such a good job of carrying these lead melodies and carrying the songs. The only reason he's not in the top 10 is because the band didn't create enough music for me to get an even better idea of you know how much of a frontman he could be. And since he has such a limited repertoire, I can't put him as like one of my all-time favorites in the top 10 list because I just don't have enough of a sample size. Now, if he made five albums as good as Quiet World was, then yeah, I'd definitely put him in my top 10. But like, I, I loved working with him. He's an incredibly talented guy, wonderful singer, and a great contributor to Native Constructs music for sure. So those are the honorable mentions out of the way. I just wanted to go ahead and say them up front, and we're going to start with the top 10 list. I'm not going to spend too much time on every singer, like I said, because I don't want this to turn into an hour-long video, but I do want you all to know what I appreciate about each of these singers. At number 10, we have Tom York of Radiohead. When I was in high school, um, and I was first getting into choral music and learning about singing technique, first started taking voice lessons, things like that, I listened to Radiohead for the first time, and the singing kind of was like, eh, I don't know. I don't know if I can get into this or not. But the more I listened to Radiohead, OK Computer in particular, the more I realized how nuanced his singing was. And I feel like Tom York's approach to vocalization, while not the most conventional in terms of technique, does an amazing job of conveying emotion and intention throughout the entirety of Radiohead's music. And Tom York does as good of a job as anybody of creating a mood and creating an atmosphere with his singing. I just can't imagine a song like Reckoner without Tom York's vocals in it. Or I can't imagine a song like like let down without Tom York's vocals. His voice just wholly fits what that band aims to do. And I believe that while the band as a collective is incredibly talented and skilled, they would not be who they are without Tom York. And to me, a singer that clearly causes a band to be identified through the vocals is huge. I feel like that's a big part of being a wonderful singer, a great singer. He's expressive. Um, 
his lyrics are all over the place, but generally very good. And his melodies and the music always fit. I feel like he never oversings or undersings. He's always right in the perfect spot as a singer to fit into the ensemble of the band as a whole. Next up is Dietrich Fischer Diskau. Dietrich Fischer Diskau somewhat recently passed away, which is really sad because he was one of my idols throughout college and growing up when I was learning about classical singers. But he is a German singer who mostly sung art song and did some opera. I'm not going to get too much into his background, but he's performed lots and lots of roles and he's been in the classical scene for years up until his death. And I've, I've watched videos of workshops that he did and things like that. Just a brilliant singing mind. What makes Fischer Diskal stick out to me so much is how he sings lead. Lead song is his forte, no pun intended. Uh, and it is incredible. If you look him up, if you Google him and just pick any song by you know, Schumann, Schubert, Brahms, any of them, Wagner, and you listen to his approach, it is absolutely beautiful. He has this tone that is rich, but it's clear and it's it's lyrical. It's beautiful. He is the epitome of what I would consider to be a lyric baritone. When I first got into learning about classical singing and technique, I actually didn't like the sound of opera, anything like that at all. And I asked one of my peers in college, who's a singer that I can listen to that doesn't sound like this all the time? Like, I don't want to hear someone that sounds super heavy and thick. And she actually recommended Fischer Diskau. And my voice teacher, Dr. Hobbins, also said, yeah, listen to him. He's incredible. And when I did, I was just floored. I was like, this guy just has the most incredible voice. As Dr. Hobbins used to say, he could make a baby weep. I mean, it's just beautiful. So I would highly recommend you check him out if you want to hear what I believe is a premier lyric baritone. Um, gorgeous sound, expressive, artistic, just wonderful stuff. I'll link something in the description and you can check it out. It's amazing stuff. Next up at number eight is Mr. James Labrie. And I knew that some of you expected this to be on the list for sure. And he definitely is. And he's pretty controversial, I'll admit. I'm, I was very tempted to put him as an honorable mention because of his vocal inconsistencies and because of what I believe was poor vocal hygiene throughout the you know, back half of his career. Uh, you know, but I got to put him there because he was a huge influence on me. And I've been a Dream Theater fan for Gosh, I'm looking at the date close to two decades now, and they wouldn't be they wouldn't be Dream Theater without him. I believe that when he was in his prime in the early 90s, before he ruined his voice, I feel like he was one of the best rock, prog, metal, whatever singers in the business. Um, he had a voice that was like no other, a very clear, distinctive timbre, a great sense of legato. He could sing melodies effortlessly, and he just had a really nice tenor sound. But as his voice kind of declined, it... Eh, you know, it kind of got very hit or miss even up to this day, but he's still in my favorites list. This isn't my most technically sound list. This is my favorites list. And so James Labrie is one of my favorite singers because Dream Theater has always been one of my favorite bands and because he just kind of is the defining sound of that band. And that band wouldn't be who they were if James Labrie weren't in it. Now, he's not higher up the list because he doesn't have perfect technique anymore and he didn't take great care of his voice. So I feel like I can't put him at the top of the list, even though there are some singers up in the list that I don't feel like have the best vocal hygiene either. It's it's tough, but you know, it is what it is. He's number eight. That's what I felt like was fair. Number seven, Maynard James Keenan of Tool. Now, this is one that I had to think about because I actually was considering putting Lee Douglas of Anathema in this slot, and I kind of had to go back and forth, and I didn't put Lee Douglas on the list at all because I only wanted to put three honorable mentions. It's kind of bad because I love Lee Douglas' singing too, but I felt like this slot was like Maynard James Keenan because he's definitely not the lead vocalist type, the frontman type. If you've ever seen them live, you'll know that he kind of stands in the back of the, of the stage, and he's got a shadow over him a lot of time, kind of a silhouette. He's very engaged in the music, but he doesn't present himself as like a vocalist. He's almost like a cog in the machine. And I really like that about him. And I always have the, but the biggest thing about Maynard that makes me like him the most is his ability to write lyrics. And some people think that tools, lyrics are angsty or whatever, you know, kind of shallow or superficial. But I know that when I was really into tool in, in the, you know, early two thousands, um, and I mean, I still listen to them now. I love their new album and everything. But but when I was really into Tool, I appreciated his lyrics and I appreciated his expressiveness on stage and his and his ability to 
convey ideas through the music and his use of dynamics like you know songs like third eye where he goes everything from a very soft whisper to like bellowing he does he does a little bit of everything in that sense i think that his timbre and his tone and his range are kind of stilted like i made a video where i pointed out his range is kind of limited compared to other singers and i got lambasted for it but it's just the objective truth he's he's not a jeff tate type where he's singing above the treble clef and down to the bottom of the bass clef he's just not that's not his thing but he does what he does extremely well and it fits into the ensemble perfectly i believe similar to Ross Jennings of Haken. But I believe that Maynard has had more of an influence on me as a musician and his music as a whole was a bigger factor in shaping my musicianship growing up. So Maynard is on the list. Next up at number six, I think is going to be a pretty big surprise to some of you. Uh, Annie Clark, otherwise known as St. Vincent. If you've never listened to her music, I strongly suggest that you do. It's kind of poppy, but it's really unique and really distinctive. Now, I haven't listened to the entirety of her discography, but I've listened to enough to know that I really love what she does. Her singing style is extremely unique, and while I wouldn't call it the pinnacle of vocal technique, I mean, it's really not. And you're probably noticing a trend here. I tend to like singers that fit into the music that they create very well. That, that makes me appreciate singers a lot more, makes me enjoy them a lot more. She has an incredible ability to write these distinctive, unique melodies that seem contradictory to the music, but then when you listen to it holistically and you listen to it all in context, it's amazing. If you listen to her self-titled album, you'll just hear example after example of this. Uh, Digital Witness, Huey Newton, Birth and Reverse, all these songs just are so well crafted m melodically and when you listen to the melodies in context of the music it sounds like it sh shouldn't make sense if you put it on paper you'd go wait how does this work but when you listen to it as a whole it's it's wonderful and i really really like uh saint vincent's ability to write melodies and to write music and to cause her vocals to be such a huge contributor to the music and the way that the music music functions as a whole number five is jim gray of caligula's horse if you follow my channel for any amount of time you know that i've done an interview with jim and uh he's a great guy we had a really great discussion we had like a mild debate about harsh vocals and you know they're uh they're sustainability and you all know my feelings on that so i'm not going to go into that here but he's clearly well educated on the voice he has a very good understanding of the physiology of the voice he takes care of his instrument which is really important to me but the thing about jim gray that i like the most is he first off he doesn't use pitch correction if you listen to their most recent albums their last two he has not used any pitch correction and i have a ton of respect for that there's even pitches on some of those albums that are slightly flat and that's okay, though, because it keeps that human element into it. There is no such thing as a perfect performance. And my personal opinion, this is just my opinion, is that production takes away some of the humanity, some of the realism from the music, because everything has to be so pristine and perfect and clean sounding. And I really appreciate that he was willing on these last two albums to put himself out there and not have that pitch correction stuff make everything sound so perfect. In addition to that, I love the sound of his voice. He has a really unique timbre. I'm not sure that I've ever heard anyone with the same timbre as him. People compare him to Jeff Buckley a little bit, but I don't think that the timbres are the same. Maybe the approach to vocalization is a little bit similar, but I really like Jim's timbre specifically. It's just really pretty. And you wouldn't think that a, that a sound like that would fit into metal music, but it really does. Um, he does great arrangements vocally too if you listen to some of the songs they're so singable uh none of it seems to like go too crazy range wise it always seems like it's just he really sings in his sweet spot of his voice a lot and it makes it sound great and it makes it easy to sing even if you're not a tenor like he is so jim gray definitely deserves a spot on the list number four einer solberg of leprous now einer and i have talked a couple of times he was supposed to do an interview with me i met him at a show um in atlanta a, about a year ago actually that's uh what this sign here is i think his autographs on there somewhere i don't know but yeah, i'm sure it is somewhere but but yeah this was uh, he, i met him and he was uh, supposed to do an interview with me on the channel i've reached out to him a few times about it he never got back to me so i, I don't know he agreed to it in person but hasn't happened maybe it will maybe it won't i don't know but einer has always been someone that I, I really loved as a singer i feel like he's had a very interesting singing career because if you listen to the the entirety of leprous's work and you listen to what it's become and how his vocals have been such a driving force behind the transition of their music, it shows how vital he is to the band as a whole. And he does everything that I enjoy. He uses lots of head voice. He doesn't push in his high range too much. He uses um, 
falsetto to kind of make the transitions into the upper range smoother. It, his voice is, it can go everywhere from like really powerful and dynamic in the low end, you know, in, well, I guess relatively low end. He's definitely a tenor, but in his lower modal register, it can sound very powerful and strong, but he can also use this very lyrical light sound. I think he has probably the best mix voice of any metal singer I've heard. Their most recent album is an excellent example of that. Like if you listen to Distant Bells, he does some phenomenal mix voice work in there. Really good. Um, I feel like he has an excellent sense of melody. He writes all their music, so he's a composer as well. I just have a lot of respect for him as an artist, and I think that his voice fits the music perfectly. And I believe that the way that he uses orchestration with vocals makes the music sound the way that it does. Like if you listen to something like Faux off of Cole, you can hear at the end all the little um, polyphonic things that he does to make the little chord progression at the end with the uh, uh, uh thing. If you listen, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's just really interesting, really intricate vocal work. Great voice, great singer. I've always been a big fan of his. And if you see this honor, please do an interview. I want to talk to you, man. Um, <laughs> so if you guys follow him on Twitter or something like tweet at him and tell him like, Hey, interview with Zach. Cause you know, I'd love to talk to him and I'm sure that all of you would like to hear his perspectives as well, because he does have really good technique relatively speaking. Of course, you know, he has the occasional glottal onset, that kind of thing. But I think that as a general rule, just the fact that he can use his mix voice as well as he can. And as clearly as it can, as a, as a testament to how good his technique is. So he's kind of the best of both worlds, really nice singing voice, Fits in the music, works really well in context of what he's trying to do, and he has pretty darn good technique. Number three is Thomas Hampson, and Thomas Hampson, I believe, is one of the greatest baritones I've ever heard. There are so many arias that I learned in college that I would have never learned if it were not for Thomas Hampson's readings of them that I could listen to on Spotify or Google Play Music or, or whatever, where he's singing these things that I was trying to learn in college. Um, Thomas Hampson has one of the most fluid voices, and he has the most incredible control of his singing voice that I think I've heard of almost anyone. I mean, I'm going to link uh, him singing Largo al Factotum in the description and check that out. And if that doesn't blow your mind, I don't know what else will. He's a master of melisma. He has incredible control of dynamics. He can shift vocal colors at ease. He can sing a phrase in this full, huge, dramatic baritone sound and then pull it back to this, this most gorgeous pianissimo as if it's nothing. I mean, the guy is just a freak, absolutely incredible singer. And I could listen to him sing all day. Uh, I think that he does readings of classical pieces as well as anybody. And uh, so I definitely recommend checking out Thomas Hampson. If you have not, there are not enough good things I can say about him. At number two, Bryn Terrell. Now, Thomas Hampson and Bryn Terrell are both operatic baritones and they were so close on this list. I, I almost feel like they could be like 2A and 2B. Uh, but there's something about Bryn Terrell's timbre and the quality of his voice that I really like. It almost has this like roughshod, like, um, you know, uh, hearty sound. It's, it's very thick and rich, but it doesn't sound too like overly operatic. Like uh, there's a lot of people who listen to people like uh, Dmitry Forstovsky who passed away somewhat recently the the silver haired baritone and love his sound but i feel like that voice is too haughty and too oh too thick if you listen to someone like Bryn terrible it's got that operatic sound but it also has a this richness and this kind of clarity to the timbre that i feel like gives him this extremely distinctive singing sound um if you listen to him sing you know some wagner or listen to him sing verdi or even mozart i mean he's sings most of this stuff so effortlessly and sings it so well. So I would strongly recommend checking out Bryn Terrell as well. Um, when you talk about classical singers, it's, it's a little bit harder to say, oh, well, this song in particular demonstrates what they do because they're professionals and they kind of have to master a little bit of everything in the classical realm to be able to sing it. So Bryn Terrell is definitely someone worth checking out. And I'll put a couple of links in the description for him as well. One of my all-time favorites, like Thomas Hampson, there are arias that I would have never learned in college if I had not listened to Brent Terrible sing them. And for the number one singer on my list, my favorite singer of all time is Daniel Gildenlow of Pain of Salvation. And uh, not everyone's a fan of this band, and I understand they're pretty dense. They take some time to get into. Their music's kind of all over the place, and it deals with some pretty heavy subject matter. But Daniel Gildenlow is just, in my mind, one of the most incredible, brilliant musicians that I've ever come across I wish that I could see him live. I have not had the ability to do that. I've only watched videos and you know things like that. But um, what is there to say about this guy? I mean, it hasn't already been said. He composes all of the band's music. He plays tons of instruments. He's incredibly well-read. He's an incredibly deep thinker. He spends copious amounts of time focusing on making everything perfect. He's the ultimate perfectionist when it comes to his singing. He has 
not what I would call perfect singing technique, but he has developed a technique for himself that works so well in the context of what that band does. It, it, it just, it blows my mind. You can just pick any song from the Remedy Lane, you know, Perfect Element or B era of Pain of Salvation, even the really early stuff like Entropia, and and you hear how he uses his voice as an instrument. I would I would almost say that it's Mike Patton esque. Side note, by the way, Mike Patton's not on this list because he's not one of my favorite singers. Even though I love listening to Mr. Bungle and some of the things he's done, he's not one of my favorite singers. Just a side note. But I would also I would say that Daniel Gilmour is somewhat Mike Patton esque in that he uses his voice as an instrument in and of itself, and he's not afraid to kind of push the boundaries of what makes a singer what a singer is. Um, he also has incredible control, great support, great melismas all over the place. He's all and and the music kind of runs through him. If he were not the front man of the band, the band would not be who they are. They probably wouldn't even exist. And I believe that his kind of all-encompassing approach to writing the music and being the driving force of the band, along with being an incredible frontman with fantastic live consistency and had a relatively stable career through the past, you know, 25 years or so that he's been doing this. I think all of those are hallmarks as to why he's my favorite singer. Um, he's also written some of my favorite lyrics ever. My favorite song ever is King of Lost by Pain of Salvation. And, you know, I love the vocal performance on that. I mean, there's so many things I could just go on and on about with him. So, you know, I'll put some stuff in the description, but I mean, if you've never listened to him, you definitely should give their music some time. It takes some time to digest. I was not a fan of Pain of Salvation at all when I first listened to them. Um, I first heard them when I was a freshman in college, and I was kind of like, eh, this is sort of boring and dense. But after I kept listening for a while, it just kind of became that little earworm that I kept hearing in my head. And I was like, I need to listen to this some more. And next thing you know, I realize all the depth of their music and how much motif is used and how all their music is conceptual and how how rich the vocal harmonies are and i mean there's just so many things about his singing and his contributions to the music that i think make him my favorite singer check him out if you haven't um be patient give it some time and i promise you it will be rewarding to you in some sense if you do he's got a very distinctive timbre um i wouldn't say that his singing tone when he's like using full voice is particularly beautiful but there's just something so nuanced about his approach to vocalization that makes me love what he does well whew, okay so that's a, gonna make a pretty long video right i know you guys have been wanting to see one but uh, <laughs> um yeah that's my top 10 favorite singers and i hope that that was enlightening to you and i hope that at least it gave you some perspective on what i'm listening for i went and looked at the list and i really don't see a common thread among all of them i feel like all the singers are somewhat distinctive in their own ways but i do feel like one thread that kind of carries through um several of the singers is that they are kind of the consummate members of the band and the band wouldn't exist without them i feel like that's a huge part of it but then again i also have some people like brain terrible or or you know jim gray jim gray isn't the primary songwriter of the band and brain terrible sings music that composers wrote you know that kind of thing so it's not 100 percent of the time james labrie doesn't write any of the music so you know, I don't really know if there's any common thread among all these singers. Maybe you all in the comments can figure out what makes all these singers kind of link together, if there's a common thread among all of them. But, you know, it's a combination of these singers having a major impact on my life for various reasons as a musician or as a singer, and me just liking how they sound. So I hope that this was insightful for all of you. I hope that you enjoyed it. And I'm super happy to make a video for you all again. I will be making videos in the future. I'm not going to set a specific time frame or specific frequency on it because I don't want to put that kind of pressure on myself but there will be more videos coming in the future so if you haven't already which i assume most of you have please like the video please subscribe i'm not trying to you know blow up my subscriber count or anything like that i'm really just making videos at this point just to have fun i'm not trying to be super serious about this because you know all the things that were happening before were just creating too much pressure and it's too stressful and it's making things really hard on me. And I just want to make things that are fun and hopefully you all learn something in the process as well. I'll keep making some educational videos, but I'm going to try to keep this all lighthearted and just more enjoyable than super serious. So I hope you all enjoyed it and I will see you all again next time I make a video. Thanks. Bye.